Today is uh, Wednesday, October 9th. Mm. Uh, this is an interview with Mr. Ed Wallingford of uh, Covert, Covert Village in Clifton Park. Um, time is about uh, quarter after two. Uh, my name is Ed Roger and I'm conducting this interview. Mr. Wallingford, it's a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you. Thank you. Um, you. You served in the U.S. Navy uh, aboard a repair ship. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and you you were a machinist? I was a toolmaker before I went. A toolmaker, okay. Did When you went into the service, did were you drafted in or did you enlist? I was drafted in because my father happened to be president for Saratoga County, Schenectady County, head of the area. Didn't my name come up? And he said, treat my son just like everybody else. And that's how I went in. Okay. Now you were, uh, you were in your earlier mid-20s when, yeah. when you went in, right? 24, 25 years yeah. old, something like that. Um, where at the t just before you went into the Navy, where were you living? In the skin of the Phoenix Avenue. Okay. With your parents, or, or was that? No, a, we had my we had my own home. You had your home. Good. Um, do you do you remember what the those first few days when you went into the service were like? Where, where did you go? Samson, New York. Okay, up up in the uh, Finger Lakes area. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And, and that was for what uh, basic training? Yeah. What was that like? Do you recall? Well, it was a different life, but did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. Part of it, except going to a ball game when it was rain, and come back in formation and weather, and and we we had a lot of thunder and lightning, but we all marched, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed the life. I wanted to get home though. Where Where'd you go after Samson? I went from Samson to the West Coast. Did you go directly to the West Coast or did you go through New York City? No, I went right through the West Coast. Okay. And whereabouts was that? San Diego or San, San Diego? Um, what, what'd you do there? What, what, when you got to San Diego, mm -hmm. where were you? At, a, at an agency? I was right up in Camp Pendleton. At Pendleton? And is that when you got on your ship? No, that was part of We're in Camp Pendleton, our papers were lost. And we had to go down through Mexico and come up. But our papers were lost. And we were there. And then I went to the big shop in the base, the machine shop. And from there I went down into the yard repairs you. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of tools were you skilled with in the machine shop? Lathes and milling machines, things like right, that? Lathes milling machines. I, I, we get a Canadian tree come in there and they, one of them banged us right on the bow. But um, I had to make a gear for and I had done all of this. And then we had to bring it to them. And they put it in themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you, you started at a, at a machine shop at Camp Pendleton, right? No, not at Camp Pendleton. Camp Pendleton, we just sat there. Okay. And then we had to go back to San Diego to get a machine shop. But was that on land or was that on your ship? That was on land. Okay. I first went to the machine shop in the base and then on the yard repair. Okay. Um, and what, you waited a while before you finally got on the ship? Well, they needed somebody down there, so they sent me down. Okay. Um, did, 
did you, uh, I mean, uh, there were a lot of other young men uh, <laughs> serving there at the same time, right? Yeah. Um, did you make friends with a lot of them, or how, how did, how, what was life like when you were, when you were there, do you remember? Uh, I made friends with them. I made friends with uh, some of them in L.A. And in San Diego. And in Ohio. And I knew the whole group of boys the ship. There weren't that many iron women. How many people would be on that ship? I see. There must have been 12 of the members of the crew. And then they had the chief and the captain. Yeah. So the, the whole ship had fewer than 20 people in it? At the time we were there because we had a hole full of batteries to carry the biggest room. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have no power. I understand that we were there to be told. The ship did? Oh, yeah. The yeah, other repair had no power. They had diesels on it for power. The ship put no, no propulsion. We had a captain to give that we had. Uh. So, uh, to be clear, did this, would the ship never had any propulsion engines? It was always towed to wherever uh, you needed it? It'd have to be towed. So it's kind of like a barge or something. Uh, it's a big crate, that's all I okay. put with machine shop stuff. Huh. So the engines that you had aboard then were to provide the power to run the machines and um, do those other things, right? Right. Hmm. How, how big a vessel was this? Do you recall how long it was? Uh. I'd say maybe from that window almost to the other side, it was a good side. Okay. Huh. And, and, but, but you were located in the San Diego area, right? And then yeah. the, the ships would come in and, yeah. and you'd be available to work on work them? Out. Okay. I did refrigeration work too. Uh -huh. Did you live aboard this ship? Oh, yeah. So there were crew's quarters there. Yeah. And they cooked meals? Yeah. How were the meals? Well, we had good meals. I couldn't complain about the meal. Everybody I've talked to who's had a Navy experience said the food was, was very good. Yeah, they said it pretty good. Did you get liberty? Were you able to go ashore much? Oh, yeah. Where'd you go? The baseball game, San Diego Padres had a ballpark right down there. And I saw Bob Fuller and Satchel Peg. Did you? And I played ball with Pepper Mart. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, I mean, does some particular event stand out in your mind, something that you remember that that either was very funny or, or was, you know, <coughs> pleasant? Well, I thought it was funny. I was playing the outfield and Pepper Martin was up. He hit a ball, a fly ball, looked like a golf ball on you. And I went back because I could play the ball pretty good. And the ball was just flat over my head, I couldn't reach it. But that was a funny incident. I played a lot of tennis out there. Hmm. I thought the experience was good for me. I appreciated my home when I got home. Did you? Were you able to get home on leave much during the time you were in the Navy? I got home more. once on leave. Only once? Yeah. And then when I got out, I was home for good. How, how long? After you joined the Navy, did you get a chance to come home? Were you in for like a year or two before you got back home? 
I'm not better than you. Uh -huh. What was that like? Was it uh, coming home after that period of time and then having to go back to the West Coast again? I mean, how, do you remember? What, was it fun or did you, how'd you feel about that? I wasn't crazy about it, but I knew I had to go back. Yeah. But I couldn't say it. I think I learned a lot. Did you have a, a number of friends from home who also went in the service at about the same time you did? They were all older than I was, my friends at home. They were two or three years older than me. They were outside the limits they would take. Oh. So they didn't get drafted or they didn't No, list? they made a lot of money though. <laughs> Yeah. Doing, doing what? Because they stayed home and were able to work? Oh, yeah. Well, they needed people at home, too. Yeah. I think if my father hadn't been head of that board, I'd have been home, too, then. Huh. Were, yeah. you, were you sort of angry that you were drafted? No. I, I said, I'm not going to complain everybody else. No, my father wouldn't tolerate that to me complaining. Hmm. So what, um, I guess I'm still trying to get clear here. You, you lived aboard this repair ship. Um, and how often were you able to get liberty and actually get off the ship? I mean, every week or so, or much, much less than that? Well, we had, we had times when we go up to San Diego Zoo, and we, we got liberty enough. And there was some of them didn't allow to, you know, they come back and drunk and then, Lord. One night I had to pull a guy out of the water, and he fell overboard. And his body was found floating. This is one of your, in your crew? No, no. one of the, one of the crew from one of the ships. Of the that ships. So how did that work? The ships, the, the, the Navy ships would come in to, to where you were, and then they would, what, tie up alongside, or? Tie along the pier. Okay. Right in pier. Yeah. And would, would your ship move over toward them if you had to do some work on them? No, they... They'd we go if we had a look at what it was, and if we didn't, they'd bring it and we'd do it. Uh, i never forget, we had an admiral, a Navy admiral, that was going to retire, and he had another star, and it was concave, like that over there, go against the you. They wanted to drill a hole in the tap. <laughs> So he asked the first class, I was second class. He was afraid to do it. And the chief said to me, can you do it? I said, I'm, I'll make a flat bottom drill and then go. And then they said, the, the guy that brought the star over to us that time, he sent the chief couple of cigars. <laughs> so what, when you were living on the, the repair ship, um, you weren't on duty all the time, right? No. Okay. Um, what, what did you do when, in those times when you were just off duty, when you had time to yourself? I read. I read. You read? Yeah. And What'd you like to read? I, I used to like it. I need mechanical magazine. And I... I do my laundry, too. Uh -huh. We had a... more of a washing machine. Doesn't sound like it was too exciting. It was just sort of getting by day to day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was looking to the war to get over. Yeah. Did you, um, did you make close friends with your shipmates, or? Yeah, I did. 
I was somebody at home, and they invited me up for Christmas dinner. Where was that? In San Diego. San Diego? I lived in San Diego one of them. I wanted me to take a sister out. I said, I can't, I'm married. Uh -huh. so, so you were married before you went in the service, mm -hmm. right? Um, how, how did you keep in contact with your wife and your family back home? I wrote, I wrote my wife every day. Did you? And she did, wrote me. And did you, did the mail, well, if you were there, you probably, the mail probably wasn't held up too long, right? I mean, no. it would come back and forth. Was uh, was it was it hard for you to be away from your family for that oh, long? Yeah, well, I didn't like them. But Did you have any children at that time? One more. Uh -huh. So you were you were away from him. At, well, mm. okay. He was almost three years old when I came. Hmm. Was that hard for you? Well, I missed him. Um, when you <clears throat> when you left the service, where were you when you were whatever they called it, mustered out or discharged? Were you still in California in San Diego? Mm -hmm. I got I got transferred. Up. That on city of the train, you know, the city of LA. And they took me to, in the Amsterdam here. And the conductor said, You're supposed to get off. I said, How am I going to get off? I, said, I live in Schenectady. You, this was in Amsterdam? He was trying to get you off there? Yeah. He told me. And I said, well, I'll pay you. No, he said, sit down, you'll get off. So they took me. Hmm. <coughs> People in the Midwest were nice going out wherever they stopped. Okay. They this is when you stopped on the train at the very Yeah, no. When, when you stopped there, did you, I mean, did, was it a long stop? Did you get off the train and stay there? Or? No, they'd, they'd be there and they'd give you some. Okay, and then you just keep on. on going. So people were, were grateful that you were happy yeah. to see you and mm -hmm. nice to you? Yeah, I think everybody was nice to see me. Good. So when you got back to Schenectady then, um, you, you reunited with your family, obviously, mm -hmm. moved back home. And then what, you just went back to work? Yeah, well, I went back to work. Where were you working? Yeah, general work. In the machine shop, as a machinist? As a tool maker. Tool maker. And then I become a foreman. Uh -huh. And then I become a method specialist. How long did you work for GE? 42 years. Wow. How long have you been retired? Since 1980. 1980. Wow. Hmm. I ain't got the memory like I used to have. Oh, yeah. But as you look back on it, was, was that experience in the Navy, I mean, was that a was that a, something you enjoyed, a good part of your life, or just something you had to get through? It was a good part of my life, because you met a lot of people there. Do you keep in touch with, the, with your shipmates? I have, but they've been dying off. And I'm just so the I'm wrong. Yeah, that's true. Did you, were, did you have reunions and things? Did you see them from time to time? No, because a lot of them were in the Midwest. And, and, I, and then, we corresponded for us very often, but then they died off. 
on, on the ship, how many officers did you have? Just a couple? Ladies, captain, and the, and the chief on the Saturday Pass. And did you have the same officers the whole time, or did they change? Same officers. What would you think of them? Did you, were they okay? They were okay. Good, good people? Mm -hmm. Great. I didn't have no trouble getting along with anybody. And your crew was well behaved? No fights? And no. We all know each other. Yeah. Well, we had an Indian aboard. An Apache Indian. Yeah. He came back one night. Lock to the ear. And he, he was going after everybody. I said, Leave him alone. I got him. So I, I opened the gallery door. I said, Come on. Because I didn't see him alone. Uh, he got in there. I shut the closed the door. Hatch. The next morning I said, he'll come back again like he did last night. I said, I'll kill you, you won't kill nobody. <laughs> Some things you don't forget. Well, were there any other, is there anything else that, um, that sticks in your mind about that time that you'd like to mention or share with me? a long time ago. I had to do the section one night. You know, these carbon and the things they just suck up the water or whatever. Well, I always call them a cartridge to carbonate the water. One of the crew there took a piece of pipe, put it in, knocked the end up. Went out on a state road and hit a Marine officer. There were Marines all over the place. You know what I did with them cartridges? I put them in the refrigeration thing. So I got to buy that all right. No, I, I can't say it was a good experience. His son took sick and he didn't have any money. And I had some money up in the YMCA that I used to send home to my wife. So he asked me to buy He said, I'll pay you back. Wally, he called me Wally. I said, all right, don't worry about it. Come back, he paid. I don't know why. Probably been giving you too much good stuff. I don't know what else to tell you. I tell you it's close, I remember. That's fine. No, this is, this is fine. This is all people's reminiscences, and it's all very valuable. But, okay. Let's uh, let's call that a wrap. Okay. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a very nice conversation. Thank you.